I said earlier, we are going to start a class on uh, orientation program for QMS systems in pharmaceutical industry. QMS means quality management system. So this is a 14 day course where we will cover all the aspects of quality management systems. The trainer introduction. My name is Teja K and I am a MPharm graduate with a pharmaceutical background and I have total 11 above areas experience in uh, manufacturing and quality assurance domains in, in the pharmaceutical industry. I have worked in uh, uh, Hetero Labs, Dr. Reddy's FT03 and Natco Pharma Limited. And uh, uh, right now also I am uh, working with and uh, I'm having more than 11 years experience. So the entire course duration comes under 15 days. This course exposure to this course will give you a detailed exposure on the QMS systems that are followed in the pharmaceutical industry. And we will be seeing all the QMS systems with real case examples in the industry and ways to address them and how they are closed and how the uh, various quality systems are handled in a pharmaceutical industry. The schedule for the ease of understanding is divided into the following sections to have a knowledge from the roots of all the concepts. So entire 15 day schedule is divided into the as follows. The first day we will have an introduction to the quality management system where we will see what is QMS and how the various types of QMS and how um, QMS works in a pharmaceutical industry and how to handle them. Second day we will go deeply into the discussion on how to handle a deviation in a pharmaceutical industry. So uh, a deviation is nothing but any a deviation from a particular procedure is called a deviation and what are the types of deviations how do you address them how do you investigate and how do you close them we will we will discuss on day two and coming to day three we will have a detailed discussion on the oas that is out of specification and out of trends that are in, uh, occurring in the pharmaceutical labs that is the qc labs so OOS means out of specifications and OOT means out of trends and we will discuss how they are related, how they are addressed and what, are the, what is OOS and what is OOT we will be discussing in the third day. And on the fourth day we will discuss on how a change control management works in a pharmaceutical industry. Change, uh, how do you handle the change management system and what are the investigations, how do you address them, what are the supporting data required to close a change control will be discussed in day four. On the day five, we'll be discussing on the how to handle the market compliance and how to handle the recalls, where all the things related to the investigations, the root cause, corrective action and preventive action, effectiveness check will be discussed in day five. And in detail, all the root cause investigations related to the OOS, OOT, deviations and change control and uh, market compliance and recalls will be discussed uh, on day 6 and day 7 day 6 and day 7 we will discuss in deep regarding how do you investigate what are the ways of investigating a root cause and how what are the different methods followed like um, fishbone analysis and fmea analysis fe FE analysis and 5i analysis all the things we will discuss all the methodologies and their importance and in which situation what type of methodology to be used will be discussed in the day 6 and day 7 right and coming to day 8 we will discuss regarding the risk management and the risk assessment how do you classify the risk of a particular deviation or an incident will be discussed on day 8 the risk assessment is very uh, important after the root cause investigation to impact the assess quality to impact the uh, to know the impact of the deviation or incident on the quality of the product. So next coming to the day 9th, after all the risk assessment, root cause investigations, everything has been done, we need to propose a corrective action and preventive action to prevent uh, the further occurrence of the particular quality uh, system like the deviation or incident. So how do you address the corrective and preventive action and how do you monitor their effectiveness? So effectiveness checks monitoring will be discussed on day 9th. And from the day 10th to 15th, we will discuss on various real-time live case studies of the various uh, things like deviations. On day 10, we will discuss on case study on deviations. On day 11, we will discuss on a case study on OS and OOTs with live examples occurring in the pharmaceutical industry. Day 12, we will have a overview on the case study on change control management. Day 13, we will have case study on market complaints and recalls. And day 4, once all these things are completed, we will discuss on how an USFDA works, inspection works, and what are the type of 483 letters uh, given to the pharmaceutical plants and how 
what will be the type of observations in the pharmaceutical industry the 483 observations will be discussed on day 4 and day 14th and day 15th also will be continued and it will be open for all the open questions and we will discuss in deep regarding and uh, all the quality management systems this is the in brief the core structure of the qms so let me explain you and overview of the definitions what is meant by what in a qms in today's session um, so qms means quality management system and a quality management system is very important in the pharmaceutical industry and it is a basic requirement of the regulatory guideline related to the icsq9 so quality management system is designed based upon the qm ICH guidelines indian uh, International Conference of Harmonization Q9 guidelines and Q11 guidelines we follow the QMS systems handling so what is meant by the deviations all these below things comes under the quality management system the first one is the deviation handling what is a deviation uh, in the deviation is nothing but a deviating a particular procedure what is a procedure in a pharmaceutical industry the procedure is nothing but a written procedure or it is a standard operating procedure if you are not doing anything according to the standard operating written procedure which is an approved document is called as a deviation deviations will be classified as two types one is a planned deviation and second is the unplanned deviation planned deviation is nothing but before uh, performing a particular task you you want you you will have an idea of uh, deviating the procedure in that case you need to raise a planned deviation or it is called as a deviation simple words what is meant by unplanned deviation the procedure is we are doing it in a uh, all the procedure has already been started and now if you follow the procedure you know that we will not get a correct output in this case you need to deviate the procedure then because the procedure is already started it will come under unplanned deviation before starting the procedure you don't know that this particular thing will occur the unplanned deviation may occur intentionally or unintentionally so this is called other words it is called as an incident so this is these are the two types of deviations and next what is meant by OOS out of specifications and OOT out of trends out of specification is nothing but when you are analyzing a product in a QC lab if anything for example the limit of the particular test SA for example say it should be 90 percentage to 110 percentage so uh, for a particular batch uh, in a part for a particular batch and a particular product if the result is coming as 111 then it is called as an OOS and what is meant by OOT for example a particular campaign batches all batches you are getting uh, even though the limit is 90 to 110 all you are getting 100 and one batch you are getting 108 then it will come under OOT in detail we will discuss on the day 3 then next what is meant by the change control management change control is nothing but uh, for example now you are you want to do a procedure uh, you are doing a particular thing and uh, you are using a particular type of material for a formulating a particular uh, tablet so now instead of one disintegrant you want to use another disintegrant due to various reasons maybe shortage of a particular uh, disintegrant or uh, change of the vendor of a particular disintegrant or due to the US FDA observations of a particular vendor you now you want to change the vendor so to change this vendor you simply you cannot change the vendor by oral means so there should be a doctor evidence that instead of this vendor you are using the uh, material of another vendor so we need to provide what is the current uh, situation what is the proposed change and wh wh on what basis you are you are going to change this that means the justification the all these things we will this all requires a major risk impact assessment and everything we need to investigate and find out the, and prove that there is no impact on the quality of the product based upon the new vendor and for this we also need to do the vendor audit supplier qualification everything needs to be done this is all these things will be dealt in the change control management next is the discussion on the handling of market complaints market complaints are nothing but a once a product is sent into the market anything that is uh, any complaint or any uh, complaint regarding the quality of the product from a customer or warehouse or the retailers is called as a market complaints and market complaints and recalls uh, also comes under the QMS systems where they will be investigated and root cause will be identified and corrective action and preventive action shall be uh, 
proposed uh, so next uh, root cause investigation and their methodologies for all these deviations os ot change controls market compression recalls you need to do the root cause investigation how that error occurred or how that particular os or how that deviation or incident has occurred you need to find out there are various methods to find out they are like 5y analysis why when where what and how like that uh, you need to ask the questions that is called as a 5y analysis in brief and next is the fishbone diagram and uh, next is the fmea analysis failure mode effective analysis and uh, hapa study there are various methods all these things we will discuss in the day 6th and day 7th and next you also need to uh, assess the risk on the quality of the product for this you will have an rpn numbering that is the risk probability numbering and based upon this risk probability numbering you need to assess the severity on the quality of the product this is called as a risk assessment and risk management and the next is the corrective and preventive actions and the and uh, monitoring the effectiveness of the corrective action and preventive action so these are the things that are to be monitored and corrective action and preventive action should be proposed based upon the root cause investigation and these actions should be such that this particular type of the defect or uh, issue will not reappear again so this is called as a corrective and preventive action so this is in brief regarding this course and uh, anything related all the case studies on each and every quality management system element will be discussed for five days and uh, you will get a brief, brief detailed knowledge on all the aspects of qms and uh, at the, at the end of the course you will be awarded a certificate and also the training material will be provided in detail at the end of the course so please uh, join this course so to get an overview and in detail regarding all the quality management systems that are followed in the pharmaceutical industry so if you are having any questions now just we will wait for two minutes and if if you want to know anything about the course just please uh, ask me